What's up guys, my name is Kelvin Wiley and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you were new, if you could please hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications, that way you're alerted every time that I post a new video. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing my video on Aurelis Cristatus, which is the wheel bug. Now assassin bugs, which is what the wheel bug is a species of, are some of my favorite insects to keep. If you love predatory insects that are not only super cool looking, but also have a um, a great predatory response when you give them prey, then assassin bugs are probably the perfect insect to keep, other than keeping mantises. So enough talking, let's just get right into the video. So this beautiful little insect right here is what's known as a wheel bug. This particular one is Aurelis cristatus, and there are only four different species within this genus. But this one is the only species that can be found here in the US. So wheelbug is its common name, but the group that wheelbugs belong to are assassin bugs. Assassin bugs belong to the insect family Reduviidae, and there are well over 7,000 different species of assassin bugs worldwide. Aurelis cristatus, or the wheelbug, gets its name from its wheel-like thorax. So the thorax, I'm sure many of you know, is the center part of the insect. Insects have three different parts, its head, its thorax, which is the middle, and the abdomen, which is the back end. If you look at the thorax, it's almost like a, a uh, power saw. It's wheel-like in appearance, and then it has these little tiny spikes or ridges. Now this particular species of wheel bug that I'm holding is actually the largest terrestrial true bug or hemipteran in the United States. You may be wondering what a true bug or a hemipteran is and what that is is both words true bug and hemipteran are they mean the exact same thing. One is just a more common word for hemipteran. Hemipteran is more the scientific word. Uh, verbiage that you would use to describe the common word, which is true bug. Now, what a true bug or a hemipteran, depending on which word you want to use, are groups of insects that share one thing in common. And that one thing is their mouth parts. So, the mouth part that I'm referring to, which is located right at the tip of the head, right underneath, is its rostrum. All true bugs or hemipterans have a rostrum and what a rostrum is is a piercing sucking mouth part that they utilize in many different ways depending on the particular true bug for example bed bugs which are a type of hemipteran or true bug whatever word you want to use they use their rostrum to pierce and suck flesh to feed on blood Cicadas, which are another type of true bug, use their rostrum to pierce tree roots to suck the sap out of them. Now, all species of assassin bugs, which are predatory, they use their rostrum to pierce the exoskeleton of their prey and then inject saliva that is laced with venom, which then causes its prey to become paralyzed. And then not only that, but the venom actually breaks down the internal tissues of its prey thus liquefying its insides, which it then uses to suck out. It basically just drinks out all the digestive enzymes that it pumped into its prey's body. That is how they utilize their rostrum. The bite, or really the, the venom that the wheel bug injects is said to be extremely painful. I have no idea how painful it is, but I will soon find out towards the end of this video because I'm going to envenomate myself with this species. I've actually never been envenomated by any species of assassin bug, so this will be very interesting and I'm quite curious to see how bad it actually hurts. One thing I forgot to talk about when I was referencing different types of hemipterans and what they use their rostrums for is that the word bug actually only applies to hemipterans or true bugs. So, for example, a beetle is not a bug, an ant is not a bug, a mantis is not a bug, and the list just goes on. Fly, dragonfly, earwig, 
You know, those are not technically bugs. Bugs only refer to insects that have a rostrum. So bed bugs, stink bugs, giant water bugs, um, etc., etc. Those are in oh, cicadas. I mean, the, I mean, there's so many different species or groups of hemipterans. I mean, um, it's actually very fascinating. The insect order that true bugs uh, are in is hemiptera, and I mean, there's so it's so vast with so many different cool and unique groups within that order. But I digress. So the only insects that are technically bugs, B-U-G, um, S, <laughs> are hemipterans or true bugs. So Now the wheel bug, as you guys can see, um, I did say, you know, they are venomous. They will, you know, puncture their prey to inject venom, but they are extremely docile, especially when holding them. And when only when they are provoked, that is when they will um, inject their, their bite, their, their venom. So, you know, as you can probably tell it, you know, it's not provoked. If you just let it walk in your hand, it really doesn't even know it's on my hand. <laughs> it just feels like the ground underneath of it is moving. It doesn't even know it's on a human. Yeah, these guys will pretty much feed on a variety of different insects. It, they, they're not picky eaters at all. They'll pretty much predate on anything that they can catch and subdue. So not only does the wheel bug have a venomous bite, they also have a second line of defense, which is odor. They have these odor glands underneath of their abdomen. Um, I'll actually show you if I can get a uh, nice view of it. I'll, I'll show you guys. So located right where my index finger is pointed at is where the odor comes out of. There's a gland right there. Um, it's actually it actually opens up and it's almost like a, a reddish orange color, but I recently bred these guys and she has laid me eggs and ever since then, after she has laid the eggs for me, um, it's no longer like a, that, you know, bright reddish orange color. But the thing is, is I can still smell the odor. It's, it's, it's not, I wouldn't say bad. It has a very unique and interesting uh, smell to it for sure. And then, also, besides the bite and chemical defense, they can fly. Now, this I have not yet seen um, in person. I've seen online of them flying, but never in person. But just letting you guys know they can fly. So they do have wings when they're full grown adults. But it's pretty rare, at least in my experience, I have yet to see them fly, but they can do it. So right here are the eggs that she has laid for me. These are not all of them. She has a couple more that I'll show you in a few seconds. Um, the eggs are pretty small. They generally lay them in clusters, usually like this, but for whatever reason, she didn't lay most of the eggs in a giant cluster. They were kind of all scattered. And so I put them in a cup, but yeah, they're, they're pretty tiny. She, she laid quite a few for me. Now the eggs, they have to overwinter, and what that means is that they have to have a cold season in order for them to hatch. So if any of you guys successfully breed wheel bugs or maybe um, you know have caught one in the wild and it's a female and she's you know gravid, has recently mated with the male and begins to lay eggs, you can collect the eggs and actually put them in the refrigerator to kind of simulate a, um, an in-captive uh, reproduction of what would happen in the wild, a uh, cold season. So the refrigerator temperature is the perfect uh, temperature that is actually perfect for incubating the eggs. Now come springtime, you can remove the eggs from the refrigerator and just room temperature would do um, and you know hopefully within you know weeks or however long it will take, the eggs will begin to hatch. So right now, I'm going to show you guys a video that I got um, of my male and female wheel bugs mating. Hopefully it'll give you guys an idea of what it looks like when wheel bugs are mating.
Alright, so now I'm going to show you guys how to build a suitable enclosure for your wheel bug. Let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that you're going to need is your enclosure. Now, the enclosure that you're typically going to want to use when housing assassin bugs is something that is vertically long. You don't want anything kind of too uh, wide or flat, and that is because uh, if your assassin bug is um, not matured yet and is still a nymph in its nymphal stage, uh, assassin bugs typically molt uh, on a vertical surface. They're, they usually hang around vertically anyway to begin with, but um, you're going to need an enclosure that can kind of have some height to it. Alright, so once you have your enclosure, you're just going to get some peat moss or you can also get coconut fiber. Either one works. Any sort of substrate, um, you can mix in um, coconut fiber with the sand, kind of give a uh, sandy substrate. But regardless of what you use, you're just going to fill the enclosure, the base of it, with your substrate. Kind of even it out. Now the next thing that you're going to want to add, or you don't necessarily have to, but you can if you want, just add some leaves, just kind of make it, you know, a little pretty in there for aesthetic purposes. Alright, now the next thing that you're going to want to add is the vertical surface that your wheel bug will be resting and pretty much living on. Um, so I have these two pieces of cork that I'm just going to place in the enclosure. Just like that. And that, my friends, is the completion of the wheel bug enclosure. There's substrate for them, there's leaves added, and there are two vertical surfaces that the wheel bug can walk on and feed on and sleep on. <laughs> so the only thing left to do now is add the wheel bug to it. So when feeding your wheel bug, um, typically I like to use cockroaches, but you can also use crickets. I'm just going to put the prey in front of them, make sure that the prey is moving, and they will typically just grab it using their forelegs to hold it down and then they will subdue it with their venom via the rostrum. You can try feeding them once a week. If they don't accept the food, it's no big deal, no worries. Just try again next week. They'll eat when they're hungry. And then about once to twice a week, you can get some filtered water, put in a spray bottle, and just spray the enclosure down. And as you can see, she is drinking. See that? using her mouth part, her rostrum, like a straw to suck up the water. Here's a closer look at her drinking the water. Okay, so now I'm gonna get her out so that I can try to get her to bite me. 